Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get techie. It's uh, the awesome cast here from Pittsburgh, PA. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters. Uh, and like I said, got a little bit of tech perspective from the flyover states. And we got some big news coming up in this episode. Uh, we're going to check into our awesome things of the week. A little bit of recap of Demo Day that I attended this morning. Showing that startups are definitely happening in Pittsburgh. I love it. Um, and a little bit more. We'll get into a little bit of everything here. Uh, so with me uh, in the studio, uh, dining on that fine, fine slice on Broadway pizza. Oh, I just taste Give the <laughs> shout out. Give the shout out. Is Chilla. John Chilla at Chilla on the Twitters. That's me. How's it going today? Awesome. Awesome. And remotely for the first time. This is new. <laughs> Ever. Yes. Uh, is Katie Dutters, uh, K Dutters on the Twitters. How you doing? Good. This is kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> you, you haven't. You, this is the first time you've done this. How long you've been on the show? You've never done a remote. It's like in uh -uh. in studio or a bust. Uh huh. So this is this is first time with my iPhone too. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> oh wait. So this you you're actually on the iPhone. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Awesome. How does uh, it look? Uh, it looks fine. Great. You know, you, it, is, it is weird though because some, a lot of times we'll get just better results on the. Uh, uh, iPads or iPhones or something. Usually mm -hmm. not the Android devices. Those are usually really, really bad. <laughs> yeah. Their camera quality is usually pretty poor. It, yeah, it, it, it yeah. typically is. So, wait, your 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 mic is a mile away there, Chilla. If you oh, my mic that. is a. Um... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so well, let's just fix that. Get a little closer to your facey face. Um, in the meantime, though, uh, like I said, this is the Awesome Cast. You can find us. We're over at awesomecast.com or sorgatronmedia.com. You can join us here Tuesdays at live.sorgatronmedia.com around 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Just like our good friends like Crazy Kraus, Hot Wheels, um, our boy uh, uh, Mike, who's uh, helping with the uh, tweets and the comments all night. Chachi's here as well, uh, preparing for his boss battle show here uh, after this one. And people jump in all the time and tell us uh, what they think about what we're talking about. And sometimes they'll drop a little awesome thing of the week in there as well. Uh, you can hit us up on Twitter at AwesomeCast. We're on Facebook. We're on Google Plus, please follow us, circle us, like us, whatever the case may be on any of those. Um, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com if you want to uh, hit us up that way. Uh, and again, hit us up with any stories you're into, you, you, you want us to talk about on the show, or just uh, you know, just converse in general on any of those things. Uh, we're posting stuff that catches our interest all through the week, so please go check that out. Um, we're also available on iTunes, Roku, Blip TV, YouTube, Stitcher, and Spreaker. Uh, currently, so check us out in video and audio forums in any of those venues. Uh, so let's get started with the awesome things of the week. And uh, Chilla, what do you have going on here? So I, I got to turn your mic back up after we moved it. <laughs> so now <laughs> not, you can tell. Now I can tell you. So I recently, it was my birthday, mm -hmm. and I loved grill. So I got the iGrill Mini, which probably doesn't sound as cool as it actually is. Um, so what the iGrill Mini is, is it's probably about an inch thick and about as big as like a silver dollar. Oh, wow. Um, it's it's extremely small. It was extremely impressive. Um, it has a small watch battery in it. So obviously it's it's a little bit, it's actually just a, just a hair bigger than like a, the, the diameter of, of a watch battery. But um, what it does is as soon as you plug in this little headphone jack looking thing into the one end, and then it has a long metal needle on the other. You jam that meat needle into your meat. And it keeps track of the temperature of the meat through Bluetooth on your phone. And then on your phone, you can say, you know, alert me when it when my pork chop is medium or is 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 medium rare or alert me when my fish is done. And it has all these different settings already pre-built in. And as soon as the, the temperature of the meat hits the hits the correct temperature you get an alert on your phone the little thing flashes and you're good to go um it does come with a little um sticker that has a piece of like a sticker magnet that you can actually attach it right to your grill if you want 
Um, it also has a little plastic base that's kind of rubberized on the bottom to keep it keep it solid. Um, you can actually use multiple of them. Um, I don't know what the maximum number of the devices that you can hook up to one to one phone is, but it's it it's really nice and it my steak was perfect. I like my steak rare, um, and it was it was amazing. Uh, and it's it's it actually is and it the first time using it I, I actually stood there and just watched the temperature go up <laughs> as my food was cooking obviously you're limited to one thing at a time unless you keep removing the the thermometer and putting it in something else um but it it works out really really well i, I really enjoyed using it i would love to have had one of these when we had the uh the cafe he always had to get the thermometer and mm-hmm. stick it in and everything. I'd love to just have a bunch of these on the grill, especially since we were kind of a smaller operation. Uh, but, but the you know, it's one less thing to kind of check out, you know, and uh, uh, just <laughs> this all just went to a panel that set mm-hmm. all the temperatures. Well, it looks like they do have the iGrill 2, which, which uh, allows you to hook up a, a couple of thermometers to it. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, I have the Mini. It allows for one. But the... But the actually storage thing for the probe is really nice, too, because it lets you wind up the cord and then um, with with a thermometer clipped onto the side. Uh, I found it very handy. It's really nice. The the cord on it is kind of like that woven metal. So, you know, you can leave it inside the grill. You can leave it to whatever. I think it's it says you should be fine up to 500 degrees. So I don't think you're going to melt it. Awesome. That's really neat because I get really nervous cooking things like pork and fish mm-hmm. on a grill because the whole um, salmonella stuff. But that's really neat. I want one now. <laughs> it looks like it's uh well they got a couple. Of, uh, the the main one looks like it's thirty nine ninety nine according to their site, and uh, it's at uh, i device dot com. Uh, if you want to go check that out in there, uh, they also have a kitchen thermometer. Was this oh, wait is this is this also i phone it is yes all all their stuff is i think like bluetooth connected so they do have a bunch of and so this is probably more what i'm thinking is like this kitchen thermometer here would be more uh you know set up for like maybe a broader uh professional cooking kind of situation i think the kitchen thermometer allows up to two devices the iGrill 2 not the mini Mm -hmm. i think allows up to four nice but nice. like, but there then their app actually then allows you to hook up to multiple at the same time. Mm-hmm. So if you started off with like kitchen thermometer and then threw on the iGrill two and then threw on a mini five seven, you'd have seven seven thermometers to monitor. Awesome. So go check that out, um, Dutters. I think you have one that uh, I, I caught one of a little bit earlier today. I haven't had a chance to watch this yet. I haven't had a chance to watch the whole thing yet, but uh, AMC is now debate, debuting one of their shows. Uh, it's actually a tech show. Uh, it's supposed to be around IBM in the 1980s, and uh, they debuted it on their Tumblr account, which is kind of unusual. And they have a few more things planned for um, Google, Twitter, and I believe uh, Apple as far as um, kind of previews for this show. It's called, but it's still- it's called Halt and Catch Fire. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know on the podcast that I caught wind of this on, uh, it, 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 it was described as like Mad Men for the 80s. Yes, it, it, and, <laughs> I uh, that too. And there was actually a review of this show by uh, Steve Wozniak, who was there amongst most of this happening. Um, mm-hmm. and, and it was a pretty glowing review as far as that goes. Oh, good. Yeah, it's, it's a totally different thing to debut something on Tumblr. I mean, a lot of people think you just dump pictures or maybe some links on Tumblr, but to actually debut something on Tumblr is a pretty big deal as far as the advertising world goes on TV. Mm-hmm. And it is also available on like, amctv.com. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it's just kind of like the, this is the other place where they put it. Um, so uh, I, I'm interested, especially uh, the kind of stuff that AMC has been putting out lately. Uh, mm-hmm. This this is uh, it's kind of fun if they if they if they really give it enough kind of credence you know that that they do like you know like a madman or something like that uh, if it was done right I think I think this series could be a lot of fun yeah Maybe. and it's neat that they're being techy about a tech show mm-hmm. essentially which is kind of neat and different mm-hmm. awesome so go check that out I guess um, it's actually what it's it's not even premiered yet I think it's it's starting mm-hmm. on June first correct. So you actually get a get an advanced bit there. Just when I worked through everything on Amazon, 
that I have was subscribed <laughs> to. Now I'm probably going to get into this thing. Uh, so awesome. Well, uh, my awesome thing is a week. I, you know, I've been going through some things. I've been using a few things for for a while, and I'm I'm going to start making a little list so I, I'm not like you know wondering here on Tuesday what I should talk about. Uh, but this is one I've been using for a few weeks now. Um, I listened to, of course, this week in Google, great show over on the Twit Network, and Gina Trapani, who was one of the people that that came up uh, that started Life Hacker, for instance. Uh, but she's a programmer. She's she's done a lot of uh, applications. I think the to do text app it was hers didn't she do one too where you it's like a how to speed read and it shows one word no that is uh, uh natalie morris okay. and uh clayton morris uh. That, that worked on that one. um but think up is uh it, it, it's it's kind of a it, it was weird because they, they actually had a version of this that you can install on your server and it would it would it would do it there now they have a a hosted version uh that is now uh sixty dollars a year uh, which isn't bad considering what I pay for Hootsuite, which is six bucks a month. So it's actually a little, and I mean, it does, doesn't do quite as much as Hootsuite. Um, it's more of like a different take on analytics. So uh, I have it attached here to uh, my own account here. Um, and it tells me stuff like uh, 21 people reply to my uh, status update. You know, this is a, something on Facebook. It was like, what's your Star Wars name that I actually shared over from my sister? Um, so it's, so Facebook and Twitter, I'm able to put in just one account. So I can't go and dump in like all my Twitter accounts into it. I don't know if that's something that they're going to do eventually, or I just have to you know, drop 60 bucks per account uh, in order to do this. It doesn't seem to be quite so... Uh, you know, attuned for that kind of thing. Uh, but it is, you know, they say it, it's, it'll help you become a better Twitterer, basically. Uh, things like this. Uh, my status updates from last week got the best responses between uh, 9 p.m. and 10 p.m. with uh, 18 comments and all. That's, that's again, with Facebook. Um, I and I see this a lot since I retweet my podcast, who, who none of them have as many followers as, as my personal account does, because that's where I do all the tweets. Uh, boosted awesome cast tweet to uh, 1,194 more people, you know. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it's it's pretty neat the way it is. It looks like they're glitching a little bit with uh, well, maybe, maybe that's something going on with this computer then. Um, but uh, let's see, uh, it'll tell you how much you say I, me. Uh, how, how much you're talking about yourself on Twitter, and I'll say, hey, you talk about yourself. I, <laughs> I understand it says a special thing if you drop the F-bomb a lot on Twitter as well. Uh, it lets me know anybody significant that followed me, especially people. Uh, it'll let me know, hey, somebody with a lot of followers followed you. Um, it, it, it points out that you favored two tweets with links in them, which is you know, a really good thing on Twitter. Uh, 115 more people saw Chachi's tweet um than they would have otherwise when i retweeted his gummy bears saturday morning slow jams yesterday um it tells me uh i have tweeted <clears throat> forty three thousand two hundred and fifty three times that's over seven days 12 hours and 13 minutes of my life that's hysterical wow, wow. this is the kind of <clears throat> stuff uh that it breaks down it's been pretty cool here uh it tells me how many tweets i've had for the week uh oh, you're down 60 you're down 60 from i know the i'm down week. 60 for the entire week i had a light week <laughs> <laughs> um, this one hit a nerve this week is when I, uh, uh, tweeted about a, a Cesaro shirt for WWE. Um, but no, it, it, and it's kind of fun and you get a report pretty much daily, sometimes twice a day. Um, so it's thinkup.com. You can go check that out and, uh, participate in that. And, and I think they give you, um, I don't know. I, I, I accidentally didn't pay for it when I signed up. <laughs> they do catch on in about a week though. Um, but, uh, but, uh, it, it's pretty cool. I have been hearing them talk about it for ever on this podcast and finally it's like yeah let's 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 dive into this let's see let's give it a shot and uh it's been pretty cool and i, I do think about how i tweet differently now mm -hmm. at least from my personal account and everything um so it, it's it's kind of nice um yeah here like for instance saying hey uh, uh sorgatron is getting personal 33 percent of my tweets contain the words i me my mine or myself in the last week that's up five percentage points from the previous week <laughs> <laughs> so some, some fun uh some fun social media stats if you check that out uh and that's thinkup.com i think there's another thinkup.org or something that's not the same thing is there a free trial um i don't believe so 
It's interesting too because it's on GitHub, so the source code's available. Yes, yes. It's I think I think it's generally open source. So I, I'm I'm presuming if I got on GitHub, I could do like I did before and find the code and install it. But I just don't get yeah. into that kind of stuff. I'd rather just kind of let them take care of it because because it was on my server and then like something happened and it was broken. Uh. You know, I don't know if it was like you know getting an update from them. Or or what? Um, and they had a pretty good model when they when they opened this version of it. Um, they had kind of a Kickstartery model, where hey, we're going to start this in a couple months. Sign up now, get a deal on it, you know, so we can get a little bit, you know, get a nice flux of of, of people in there and 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 kind of kickstart this thing going. Um, they have actually used this. I believe some of the technology used in here has been uh, some of their clients include the White House. Oh wow! Oh wow! So they they they're using this with some big end clients. So now they're just kind of making a more, I guess you can call it consumery version, um, of, of the service. So it's pretty cool. I like how it says that you pass the thousand followers and that your followers would fill uh, the Hammerstein ballroom to capacity. Yes. And how you and you had a two minute and thirty minute conversation with Chachi on Twitter. And that was a good conversation. He's apparently the one that I have extended conversations with Twitter on the most because that's <laughs> the one that he they always tell me about. And again, I never think about that, but it, it makes sense. Sometimes I mean we're generally chatting on like Google Hangout, and sometimes I just bring the converse we, we both just kind of bring a version of the conversation mm -hmm. or continue the conversation over on Twitter. Uh and and that's the most interaction, you know. So and I never think about that, like when you retweet somebody, like, am I helping them reach more people? And, I, mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, because I don't feel like I have a lot of followers. But then when I look at that in context of other people, I guess I do. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I guess mm -hmm. I'm around 1300, something like that. Um, so, again, it gives you more because sometimes you kind of tweet in a vacuum. You know, it's like I'm sending this out and I don't know how many times I send a tweet out. And I'm like, nobody's reading this. <laughs> you know, um, so it gives you kind of a more of a context for that. So it's pretty nice there. So awesome. Um, so now I guess we should talk about demo day. Um, I, I went this morning. Uh, this is Alpha Lab and Alpha Lab Gear. We've talked about them on the show. We've actually had a few businesses we early on in the show that we talked to a lot of them, including No Wait was there. Um, actually, uh, Rob from No Wait uh, was was there to uh, announce that they actually got some CRSB. Series B funding for I think it was uh, ten million dollars, um, and no wait is everywhere. I, have you noticed? Like they're mm -hmm. they're attached to a lot of restaurants. This is one of those kind of wait in line, uh, reser not reservation kind of places. But um, and, and we used the ones at Burgatory uh, a few months ago. Yeah, and Burgatory. I think BRG is it BRGR. BRGR and, and and a bunch of other ones. Well, they, the point is, is that you don't have to wait in line. Exactly, you can kind of get in line before you get there. That's nice. You can say, "Hey, when is the next table available?" Or like when we were there, like it would pull up and say, "Hey, there are four groups in front of you." Mm -hmm. You know, probably about this, and it would keep updating, keep updating. It'll text you. Um, it, it's pretty well integrated, and 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 it's running on iPads and and phones. And we talked a lot. You you know, when we had them on the show before about what they were doing with that and and using iPod touches and um I, and I think at the time like we didn't really have like Android devices really like I think Android was just coming out at the mm -hmm. time actually um so so it was it was kind of cool um but but this is kind of like the next no waits um that is you, you talked with life shell it was pretty cool to get a full presentation of what they're trying to do there mm -hmm. um and and I, and it, it's it that is it, i mean we saw him at tech cocktail everybody gives like a minute presentation and then you get to go talk with them you know mm -hmm. and i know we, we we throw a lot of hardball questions out i'm like well what what do we do with this you know um, but i think the, the advantage of speaking to someone like us is they, we throw out information or ideas that they may not have thought of because we have a different client base uh, based upon our, you know, our, our shows and our, our jobs that we can say, hey, you know, this can apply in the real world here or here. And mm -hmm. I know with them specifically, we said, oh, how about this? And they're like, oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It seemed like it was a little more solid. Um, things I didn't realize. I didn't realize that the case, the, like the, the whistle case that they're, they're, they have on their site now mm -hmm. um, actually has a button on the case. 
And that's the panic button they were talking about, I think. Or, mm -hmm. or maybe this is a modification they've, they've made uh, since we saw, saw them at Tech Cocktail about a month ago. Um, but it, it was a really, really impressive. For those who don't know Life Shell from when we talked about it on the show before, um, these guys, and I'll see if I can bring up the site real quick for you to show off uh, that. Uh, but they, it, it's basically an iPhone case. Um, and the model they have now has like a whistle, basically oh, like a rape whistle kind of on it, like a high-pitched whistle. Um, and oh, they have a PSA on their site now, it looks like. Um, and this guy looks pretty skeevy. Um, but uh, <laughs> you, have, oh. you, you have this, and there's also a, a version they're trying to make that has pepper spray built into your phone. And so I guess what happens if you're not feeling safe, you know, um, you know, particularly if you're a lady that's not feeling safe, uh, you you push your you put your finger on the button and that activates and preps whatever that is and the, whether it be the whistle or the or the pepper spray, um, and uh, and also uh, sends a signal to the app, which they're trying to they're they're saying we want this app on everybody's phone. We want everybody to be part of this network. So if there's somebody. Uh, uh, you know, from what I understand, if, if there's somebody having a problem nearby you, you'll get a notification. So maybe all those people will start saying, you know, kind of swing by and say, hey, is there a problem here? You know, and usually that's enough for whatever situation, mm -hmm. um, you know, whatever potential, you know, sexual assault or something that we're trying to avoid um, or we'll just kind of get dispersed. So um, this was interesting. And I, and I don't remember this uh, from, from our, our talk with them before. They said they want to be the, to the point where, and they showed the club and they showed the ADT sign. And, you know, if you see the club or the ADT sign, you don't bother. I mean, that old club commercial, you know, uh, where, where like, like the guy's about to break the window and he sees the club and he just walks away. You know, uh, they want to be the point where if you see somebody with that case, you don't bother. Mm -hmm. I actually saw a club in a car over the weekend. I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> I randomly see them. You know that <laughs> that, that the, the the company that made that is up by where I'm from, up in Mercer County. Uh, Do they still make them? Yeah, I think so. I think you still get because because the, the club looked as old as the car. Which yeah, really made me kind of like. Hmm. Somebody bought that in the '90s, <laughs> and the cars from the '90s, and good on them for having a car that lasted that long. And. Uh, uh, but yeah, uh, go to, they're at lifeshell.com. That's a L I F E S H E L dot com, and they had a tremendous presentation today. Um, so that was pretty cool to see. So some of the guys that stuck out. First of all, Chilla, I was telling you before the show, they started with drones. So, so are these delivery drones? Or are they attack of the drones? Uh, are they they Q -Q are, drones? They, are they the drones we're looking for? They, they, they're the drone somebody's looking for, I, I think, for sure. Um, well, these ones are more, they were targeting, I, what did I put, the, the construction and the electrical industries. And um, the idea was, uh, 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 they pitched, you know, in order for you to inspect, like, you know, we're talking about remote sites, basically, right? And, mm -hmm. and they, they think there was a bit of an application for agriculture as well uh, that they alluded to. Um, but for these guys, uh, so... You got a drone and it's in a base and this drone takes off and it's already, you know, pre-programmed for whatever it's got to do, whether it's surveying, inspecting in a certain area, brings that information back. You, you know, obviously there's a camera on there and then it just, it goes, makes its rounds and comes back to its dock station. And that's it. Completely automated. It goes and does this thing. It gets your information. Uh, you're not out in the field or using old methods or or, or having to rent somebody with a helicopter in order to do these kinds of things. Um, so this uh, is interesting. So the, so what we do, and it says I'm just reading their site. They do project management. You can check on the progress of, of subcontractors and employees. The one that, risk monitoring, assessment, client relationships, and they have advertising materials. But risk monitor that risk monitoring and assessment that could be kind of cool. Like if there's a chemical spill somewhere, exactly. just send in the drones. Mm-hmm. Just deploy the drones to, to take care of the thing you don't want people to go out there for. Right. I mean, th and I see this a, a lot of times. I feel like I feel like drones are going to be the flying version of the bomb robot. You know, the bomb squad robots mm -hmm. that they send in. Um, just in in more, you know, you know, something that does not going to take basically a small tank to have to go into. So and there's a lot of tests there. So this is the side of uh, I believe this is part of the the Alpha Lab gear side, and I think it's the first graduating class of their alpha lab gear, which is just more, um, they're actually in tune more with uh, tech shop who we've talked about on the show previously when Rob was on, mm -hmm. um, um, they're, 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 oh geez, what was the other one? 
Uh, they, they, actually, Ion Tank I saw as, as one of the uh, partners. So I think Rob may have had a hand in helping some, some of these guys, or, or at least his company. Um, so I, I, I didn't get a chance. Maybe, I'll, maybe I will go to Coffee Club this, this week and see if I can run into some of these guys. But I wanted to ask, like, cause, uh, <clears throat> the FAA is they have, a, they have to uh, make a ruling by 2015 on drones. In the meantime, not legal. They're not legal. Mm. Generally not legal for, I believe, commercial use. Oh. I might be mistaken there. There's there's some kind of question to that. Or does it have to do with how high they can go, or just like I think, altitude? I think or? a little bit altitude, altitude, um, but but definitely for if oh okay for instance, um, this started with um, I think a news station was using drones to try to cover storms like mm. tornadoes, and they got cited by I believe the FAA. Um, and this was kind of the first, you know, one of the, you know, hey, this isn't legal yet. Hey, we haven't figured this out yet. Hey, FAA has until this time to say, to say what the regulations are. Until, until then, they're going to get cited because there, there are no regulations, and it is something flying in some sort of airspace. Um, but I didn't even think about the journalism aspect of this, you know. But, uh, but no, really cool to see uh, somebody work with drones. Um, I think they already have a client or two. Um, that's what I thought saw a lot uh, uh, out of these startups. Like a lot of them already were deploying to clients, already had stuff going. This wasn't a, hey, we started this thing and please give us more money so we can keep going. Like a lot of these were very um, already hitting the ground running uh, uh, with their stuff. Um, another one we saw... I. Uh, uh, Katie, you remember Peacemaker? I don't know if you remember by name, but these were the guys that they they were at Tech Cocktail and they actually already have deployed uh, uh, one of their 3D printing kiosks into a toy store uh, over yes. on Squirrel Hill. Yes, I do remember them. Uh, so again, you know, great to kind of get the presentation for these guys because I even went over and they, there was nothing like they didn't. By the time I got to them, like they had already left, so I didn't get to see anything or or any or anything like that. But again, kind of a kiosk, three D thing. Um, apparently, uh, the biggest thing with this is per square foot, they're making more money at this toy store with this thing because it's just this box mm -hmm. sitting there. They compared mm -hmm. it to like Legos and some other things, um, and again, they're already talking with some some bigger names and stuff. Um, I think this is kind of a and this is kind of a theme too because there's another actually another product there today uh that went with this this, this whole kind of um accessibility to 3d printing hardware um mm -hmm. you know as far as this goes i mean and this like basically you're making kind of trinkets um and i don't know if you can kind of see them in pictures we'll see if you can pop that up a little bit more um but you're making these kind of little things but like you know like the first they showed the first thing that was made with the machine and it was a little heart plastic hard thing that said marry me you know um you know fun fun things like that um and the other one was <clears> by uh and there's i don't have a site on here so i don't know if they have anything online the peacemaker uh no not the peacemaker this other one called oh. saturday garage they they don't have a site they're they, on the alpha lab site but their their site's not up yet right so and i don't know if this is like them unveiling this thing they 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 we're tackling this idea that you've got CDC machines and 3D printers and they're a certain size and they're $3,000 and, you know, you pay 2000 for one of these that's like a 6 by 6 machine that's going to make maybe a coffee cup and that's it, right? Mm -hmm. So they made this little, jeez, how do I do it? It looks like a power tool and that's one thing. They wanted something that looked, it was orange like this screwdriver that I happened to randomly have down here because I was working on a computer. Um, and probably about that big. It just helps you for the audio. Um, <laughs> uh, but the idea is that little thing is a robot. And you can make, because it has a rail system that you can set up. And they said you can make something as small as like the remote she was holding in her hand. Or you can start making uh, something like this. The width on this thing could be eight feet. Okay. So wow. you could make you could make a boat, she said, <laughs> or at least the parts for a boat. Or you could make more three D printers. Or you can make more three D printers, and now, <laughs> and now we're at the end of everything because this little robot three D printer thing just made more robot three D printers. They are making the killer robots, and we're done. What was the um, Tom Selleck killer robot movie? <laughs> I don't know. 
really tom Selleck did one? Oh yeah they were like little they were like little spider robots oh geez killer uh, robot but again <laughs> <laughs> run away really yeah cover that next week on your on your on the uh, movie, movie thing minute. all right hit up on somebody tweet malengo on that one uh but again kind of like that accessibility to being able to to make things you know mm-hmm. um and i think they're selling those little things for under under a thousand dollars um and again just expandable you know so what was it said it was like two thousand three thousand dollars just to get something that made something this big and and would take up all the space it's like the dozers from fraggle rock yes <laughs> wait are you talking about this thing or are you talking about your this runaway thing. movie no okay. this thing but uh, go check that out. Saturday Garage. It's called The Auto. Um, you should be able to find something online. I'm, I'm sure they're going to be uh, selling that here. Sorg, soon. I think the thing you're thinking that are that's partnered with Alpha Lab Gear is Startbot. Yes, Startbot. Yeah. Yeah. That's the residency program for startups in the fields of uh, robotics, automation, and supporting technology. Nice. Um, another interesting one. This is this is less techy, more of a service thing. One called Romeo Delivers. It's loot crate for the guy that can't figure out what to get <laughs> his wife or significant other or, or something like that. Um, so I don't know. That, that, it's this this loot crateification. But of, it's interesting, though, because this one, is, it's customizable, isn't it? I think so. Like you can customize what they're getting. Mm-hmm. And it said this, this it includes instructions, it said, mm-hmm. of how do you deliver this or what do you do you know with this it's only like a 15 dollar box um so uh, i don't know it, it, it's, it's kind of a cool idea say i love you in a new way each month so uh but you can check that romeo delivers.com um you know something different especially since everything was like we're gonna manufacture stuff we're gonna make robots we're gonna change the world with this it's like we're just gonna have people love each other more you know, <laughs> some kind of a different different uh, uh, tone than the rest of them. Oh, uh, let's see, rapid fire TPC. And I may, did I mess, look at the flyer? Did I mess up the the the, the letters on that or something? Because uh, I know the, the site doesn't work on this. Rapid fire RTC. No TPC. TPC. Rapid rapid TPC dot com. Rapid TPC. Okay, that's what I did. So um th- these guys are specializing in a, 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 see if i get the verbiage right on there to com- composite materials maybe they don't say in the description it does not say in it says create parts that have better strength qualities than steel while remaining lighter than aluminum it doesn't the, say what they're manufacturing it. I believe it was like a composite <clears throat> material they were talking about. Um, it, this is the kind of material that they use in aerospace and they use in um, like high-end cars. But And they can manufacture it more cost-effectively. Um, from what they were described, because they said, they said in order for anybody to use these things, again, for cars, aerospace, they, they have a giant machine and they said like felt that there's like, it's size of half of this room, we're at stage AE, right? Um, and it makes one part. And it has to make a lot of those parts for the thing to be profitable. Obviously, it's a giant thing. Material is expensive. The whole process is. So what I gathered is they get this compositing material. Like they get sh- this sheet of this stuff. And and uh, it looked like they had what came across as a 3D printer for that material. Mm-hmm. And they said their first client is actually baby products. Does it carve it out of a chunk of it? Or does it... It's... Like, is it like a liquid that then hardens? No, no, no. It looked is like it... it was like, here's a sheet of this composite material. You feed it in this machine, I, presumably from what, what they were describing, and, and it spits out whatever that thing is, you know, whatever that part is, whatever, you know. But it, it, it can do it like one machine can do multiple parts versus giant machine has to do one, one giant part. part. And, and so they, you know, they, they've kind of worked it around, you know, to, to, you know, manufacture more different things. Um, so a lot of different industries. They said anything um, that you you need to be have manufactured at a lighter weight than it currently is with current materials. Mm-hmm. Um, they said that this material is in a few years uh, eventually going to be as prolific as plastic. Everything's made out of plastic now, right? So mm-hmm. 
this is going to be the thing that replaces it. It's going to make your <laughs> tablets lighter, probably. You know, it's going to, you know, except for this giant piece of glass that's in here, probably. Um, you know, it's going to make it's going to make your car, your general cars will start getting made out of this thing, so they're lighter and more fuel efficient. Um, so uh, that was again one of those one of those concepts. Like, we, I mean, we had somebody on the show early on uh, that was a polymath talking about three D printers beyond me. Holy crap! Don't even know what's going on at that point. Uh, these, this is one of those guys that was like, it looked like they were doing something cool. Uh, another one struck by was a uh, 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 CDL Warrior. I actually have a friend that's a trucker, uh, and he always and he passed me because he told me about um, some of the what looked like it assessed to a a matchmaking service for drivers, so he can say I can go out and you know drive out to you know Seattle. And then, uh, uh, you know, can I find something in Seattle to drive at least halfway back or to another town where I think I'm going to get another job? Because the more you drive, if you don't have anything on that bed, you're not making any yeah. money, you know, and you mm -hmm. have to maximize all that. He's an independent guy. Um, apparently, with all the rules and, and, and everything, retention for drivers is a problem. So, hmm. and they said that like 80% of them out there have smartphones. Um, they already have, I looked it up, it's in the Google Play Store. Uh, just the Google Play Store right now, but I think they're kind of early. Um, right now, they're still, I guess, writing out papers to do all their logs and everything. Um, so they're trying to make that more efficient. Um, some, some, you know, they communicate better, you know, back home if you have a fleet of trucks. And this is more for they're trying to manage a fleet of a fleet. these guys. So it's kind of like a, a project management kind of app for that like 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 which you know what what you would have at work you, you know you're keeping track of all your employees they able to do that more out on the road and well, with and usually they, they have they have a lot of people that do that back in like an office the the dispatch kind yeah. of center yeah my my dad owns a trucking company his dad owned a trucking company i mean it's not it's not easy and it's not fun mm-hmm I mean, there's there's a lot to it. So, I mean, this looks like it would make it a lot easier. Another mm -hmm. theme. I mean, I don't know how many of these were. Um, let's let's bring this industry into the next century. You know, uh, uh, you know, updating it with technology. Even like even on the app, they're showing here. Like, you know, this is how much time you have at the drive. This is how long you've been on duty. And again, it, with all the new regulations coming down, it's also hard to keep track of those things. Yeah, they're these only guys. allowed to drive so many mm -hmm. times a day. Exactly. They have to turn it in the logbook. So exactly. Like now, if your spots. phone is doing that for you, mm -hmm. a little easier to manage. Hopefully, less frustration. They get to, get to keep all the drivers. So apparently, there's a short, actually a shortage of drivers right now. Yes. And as the economy is booming, you know, well, that's apparently going to be more of an issue. Um, another one, kind of along the same lines, again, kind of updating technology people have been doing forever, is Inked. Uh, Ink TD is how they spell it. Um, again, kind of a matchmaking discovery appointment setting service for tattoo parlors. This, this, it's always the little stats that come up that they put together in these. That You know, 30% of people have tattoos. Hmm. Wow. Well, and this is put... Put an end to no shows at your tattoo shop. That's the biggest thing. Again, you get a no show, you're not getting paid. Mm. Uh Average tattoo is around 300 bucks. That's a big chunk of your income that's not coming in if you're sitting there with a no-show. Um, one thing it does is since there, uh, there's other, apparently other services, there's salon apps apparently that do this, mm -hmm. like this kind of appointment setting and everything. But again, it's kind of a different relationship. You show up, uh, their, their example was you show up for a bad haircut. Um, not a big deal as you showed up for a bad tattoo. <laughs> for instance so there's a lot of kind of galleries discovering the tattoo artists seeing them you can put you in contact with the tattoo artists they can start the communication and that i think is a big part of the no no shows you know um and i, I gotta think i think i gotta think on the on the tattoo side like that's a big commitment so i think if they're not confident going in there say you know i gotta show up at three o'clock ah maybe i don't want this on my body for the rest of my life maybe maybe this person's not that great of an artist who knows right uh so i don't know it, it, it seemed like a fun thing it, it, it's uh oh this is impressive they have um at least two big reality tattoo show guys on here uh backing it up so um, and, they, and they have a partnership with square mm -hmm. oh i didn't even see the square partnership that makes sense just hand that off with them. 
Um, the app just went live Saturday for the gen general populace, um, but the app for like the tattoo parlor, I think they said they had about 120 uh, stores already involved in it. Um, let's Speaking see. of stats, yeah, they, uh, it says based on industry statistics, shops are losing an average of 300 million per year to no shows. Mm -hmm. That's insane. 300 million. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. It's got hard. To, it's got to be hard to get people in the door in the first place for something like that, you know. Um, but again, just kind of like updating things. It looks like they're doing great right out of the gate. Uh, Tailored Fit, who we saw at Tech Cocktail, was there mm -hmm. again. Again, it's just kind of a really good recommended recommendation engine. I got a kick out of apparently uh, everybody's like, well, why why won't people why won't people use uh, Pinterest for dress shopping? And they're like, well, actually, we we've actually tied into Pinterest and anything you've liked actually goes into our recommendation engine. And it looks like it's like, you know, a better mm -hmm. Amazon rec recommendation engine. It looks like it's uh, uh, I keep every time they describe it the way they do, I keep thinking Pandora for dresses or mm -hmm. whatever right like like it actually says this taste actually connects with this taste that's where pandora mm -hmm. i think wins over a lot of other ones and that's why i stay on it because this song has elements similar to this song and yeah sometimes it'll go off and but you get to adjust that mm -hmm. and that's what this mm -hmm. seems to do as well so not that i'm well i guess there's... a lot of times when i look at stuff on pinterest though the only thing that I, it's, it's something that's no longer made anymore or you can't get anymore I've actually, I've actually found clothes. I'm like, oh, I want that. And then you I click on it, and it's like, this is no longer for sale. This was last season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and I think a lot of people aren't using Pinterest, right? Like the intended getting on, getting on their shop for things. You know, like mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm probably just a horrible example, but uh, I go on there and I have a few cosplay boards. I follow. You know, I a couple follow, of tech ones. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot for it. Ooh. I like it a lot for infographics, mm -hmm. and I like it a lot for like home improvement type stuff. That's where, yeah. where I find a lot of use. For yeah, it. and it's like I'm not buying anything because of that, so I don't know. And again, I'm not the like 80% of women that's on it, so mm -hmm. obviously that's, I know I have a lot of friends that are like, I'm having a wedding, here's a board of dresses, and I'm like, unfollow. Um, <laughs> and, and, or, or, or something similar to that right i'm sure they are they're putting stuff together and they'll buy one, you know mm -hmm. um so here's that uh let's see jetpack workflow that was some crm for for accountants nothing terribly exciting there though they were doing really good with it um but generally really good uh, it, oh god we have such a strong startup community here and mm -hmm. i think this is one of the mm -hmm. biggest examples of that with what alpha lab does um that they're you know i, I their demo day was just in that little, you know, most of us have been there for, for PodCamp Pittsburgh when they used to host the uh, meet and greets, right? Um, you know, this little space and it's just kind of grown and you see companies like OpenTable. No, not OpenTable. Uh, no, no, wait. no wait. That's the other one. I think that's a competitor, actually. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> you know, guys like that are just really doing cool stuff. ModCloth is always all over the news. Um, and building, I know they, they're up to like 500 employees, 300 are still here in Pittsburgh. And that's the cool thing about Alpha Lab is if you go through there, you have to, you have to still, you have to set up shop in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. That's one of the kind of, you know, you know, riders of that thing is, is you're not getting the money building up and taking off to LA, taking off mm -hmm. to New York city, you know, and it's building a really good community. These guys are number six and number seven, depending on what report you're seeing. Um, and this is the thing I didn't know. Uh, I guess one of the reasons they were number seven is because they're in the, um, I think it was the MIT backed report that I think we talked about a few weeks ago. Um, their mentorship was like the top three. Oh, wow. So wow. they have a tremendous mentorship and they actually had a lot of the people, uh, that, you know, are involved in one way or another, uh, come out and speak in between the actual demos uh so that was really cool otherwise it was really fun because i just watched the tech crunch episode of uh silicon valley i was like <laughs> yeah it is kind of like that i even noticed one of the terms that they were making fun of like it was like s-o-o-s or something s-a-a-s uh we have an s s a s uh marketing software as a service well yeah yeah and they but they use the abbreviation yeah sas <laughs> Because that was that was one of the things because it was like S O S M O S and and they were like confusing them all and having fun with it, um, but I caught that once. But I was like, I know I know that from the show, um, even though I'm not like a marketing speak kind of person. 
So, but it's fun. Go check it out. Alphalab.org. Is that, I got that right? I just go look up Alpha Lab. You'll, you'll find them. One of the great incubators. They have actually a coffee club this Thursday. If you're interested and want to go down and talk to people and, uh, you know, talk to these companies and, and maybe it's something you're interested in. I know. You know. How often do they have coffee clubs? Is it only like twice a year? Uh, it feels like it's every month or other month or something. Okay. So, because I've dropped in there and it's been mid-cycle. That's why it's kind of weird. I don't know if I want to drop in this week one because i have a lot of work to do this week and then two because like i just saw what all these companies are how do you find out about coffee club i have followed the group on facebook also uh follow their uh newsletter on their website that's how i found out about the demo day actually so Ah. but you know if you follow the facebook group you'll get invited to like everyone i think they just mass invite everybody there so consider them followed (laughs) (laughs) oh i I think you'd love that stuff um and of course they're actually and also if you have an idea uh their um um application period is now open so and and even when uh you know our friend was there and i had a few ideas and and uh it was like even if it's just an idea submit something you know they can at least you know tell you what's wrong with it you know and or 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 you know tell you hey that's a great idea you need to do x y and z here you know if they, if they love it you never know you never know um but uh, alpha, alpha lab.org if you want to check that out and find out more information, what do you get? I think, I don't know what their gear program is as far as what you get, uh, what help you get and, and, and everything. But I know you get space, you get the mentors, you get a, a little chunk of money to get started. That's the other big one. The Resumator is, uh, mm-hmm. I think they just got purchased by somebody. I feel like. Um, but go check them out. Number six in the U.S., my yeah, there's, there's number seven somewhere else, but uh, go check them out. Hey, uh, we got something b- pretty big coming up next week, guys. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a monumental episode. Monumental episode. Monumental. Um, we're, I can't believe we've done this many of these ones. Um, the 200th episode of Awesome Cast. So uh, we're going to do something special. We actually just got the details together tonight. <laughs> so thankfully, all oh, you guys are available. Uh, or else I'd just be there by myself eating pizza and on a microphone saying, yep, 200 times. Um, but uh, no, we're going to be doing episode 200. We actually will not be doing it live here on Tuesday. Um, so it's just going to be a big gap in the schedule. Maybe I'll start editing some of the other shows <laughs> and get a head start last next week or take a nap. Um, <laughs> Woo-hoo. Yay, nap time. Uh, but no, we're going to be on Slice on Broadway. Uh, we're looking at doing that Thursday about 7 p.m. If you're interested, uh, we are going, I will put it a Facebook event together soon. Um, and of course, you know, I expect a lot of people to be able to come or a lot of people can come because it's kind of a small venue um but uh no if you want to come join us and be part of it have a little bit of a live studio audience um uh we'll have that out and uh we'll, we'll have some fun for our 200th episode it's always fun when we did this for pod camp uh to get in front of a live audience and uh, it'll be fun to do that with pizza around guys this is the best oh. stuff or if our slice on broadway chilla's in here enjoying it this mm, week i ordered it twice this week not including the slices <laughs> i ate tonight here you paid money for it i had I, to, I had to get the slaughterhouse i went oh. to oh yeah i was in a different neighborhood and i had to get pizza because it was just a pizza kind of night and i felt bad I felt like I was cheating on my pizza place. Mm. Yes, it wasn't nearly as good. Uh, so I won't say the name of such pizza place, but it was not as good as the slice uh, out here in the South Hills. Um, now, go check them out, sliceonbroadway.com. It's great stuff. Uh, if you're in the South Hills of Pittsburgh, great gourmet pizza, a new location coming up in uh, Carnegie, PA uh, as well. Um, the, the New Yorker from the Bronx loves it. He ordered it twice, and he gets it for free every Tuesday when he comes in. Uh, that was it. You didn't get your fix here on Tuesday. No. So, yeah, I had uh, we we had some people over on Thursday. I'm like, oh, let's get sliced because I didn't get it. And then we had people, different people, over on Sunday, and they were like, you guys want to order pizza? And I'm like, let's order slice. You have like two pizza places <laughs> right around the corner from where you live, mm-hmm. and you ordered the one from all the way over here in Beachview. That's great. It's well worth it. It's awesome. Good. Awesome. So go check them out. And again, we'll have details up soon uh, about that uh, parte. So we got a bit of news. Let's dip into a little bit of that before uh, we have to get out of here and talk about video games. Um, Chilla, what's uh, what's striking you from this week? Uh, well, you know, hey, let's touch on. Uh, there was an announcement this morning. 
There was at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's why nobody knew. Microsoft announced, and, and everyone thought they were going to go and announce a Surface Mini tablet. I mean, there was some in-depth information about it's going to be an ARM-based processor. It's going to have a pen. It's going to be in the seven to eight inch realm, blah, 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 blah. And, and I mean, a lot of the heavy Microsoft bloggers were all talking that they potentially saw this device and et cetera, et cetera. This mythical beast of a device. This, but it's not a myth. It's, it was the mini. It was the mini surface. It wasn't a beast. And lo and behold, the small racket raccoon of a beast. <laughs> and lo and behold, they came out with a larger device. <gasps> is it a coffee table sized one? It's not coffee table sized. <laughs> um, it is of the 13 inch. I got a 12 inch on or my 12 image inch here. Range. Sorry. Yeah. 12 inch. Um, it's the 12 inch. They, they've left the, like the HD cinema screen look and they're, they've gone to more of your, what is it? Four by two. Um, so more of the iPad y kind more of more of the iPad thing. So what they and and, and, and I watched a, a I didn't it wasn't the um it wasn't like a live feed, but it was a live blog. Um I was reading a couple of them as they were going on. Everything was about the pen stylus that comes with this and how they're trying hmm. to get a stylus that actually feels like a pen and how this is a note taking device. It was also interesting that Instead of kind of going after the the iPad Air like they normally do, they primarily compared this to the MacBook Air in weight and size hmm. and, and capability. Um, I know they said that it started at um, seven ninety nine for the entry level device. This is the first time too. It's going to be Intel based, and it goes anywhere from i three all the way up to i seven. One of the interesting uh, points that they also gave was that they're in a tight partnership with Adobe and the Creative Cloud, and Adobe Photoshop is making a, a, a touch-enabled Photoshop with bigger buttons and nice. more capabilities. Also because their stylus for their Pro line has pressure sensitivity. This, they're saying, is going to feel even more like a pen than their, their last device. Um, so I'm, I think you're going to see a lot of, of artists potentially looking at this device um, i think the full tilt top of the line device um topped out at th uh, a little under three grand um I wow that that's up. a lot for a tablet yeah i know it's like more than a tablet officially but uh mm -hmm. Uh, and, and this has always been, you, you, I think from the first Surface, it's always been, uh, I felt this is for artists. You know, this is for people that need that kind of touch-enabled thing. Um, and uh, and I'm glad to see they're iterating on it. Because, yeah, they're doing a lot. I do kind of dig my touch tablet or uh, laptop thing I have going on there. Actually, if you guys actually see a nice smooth scroll on this over here, that's because I'm using my finger. It's a lot better than this touchpad on this thing. Um, mm. It makes me want to like just rip the, you know, rip the rip the screen off and start just using that as a tablet. I apologize. The top of the line Intel Core i7, 512 gig SSD, 8 gig of RAM is 1949. Um, but when you add on the type cover at 130, um, the pen which doesn't come with it for 50. The docking station, so you can use a lot larger monitor at 200, and the Surface Ethernet adapter, if you need wired Ethernet, it can get it can it can get pretty hefty hmm. in price. Wow. Three. So four. it's like they're putting a the core computer <clears throat> in there, and you're like, yo, is this like what we had promised years ago when they had like oh, hey take this android phone stick it in a dock you have a whole pc this is like we have this tablet this is the whole pc and you're like piecemealing the rest of it on as you need it with the docking yeah. station and everything um i can't man i really like i feel like you know much like i kind of feel in certain aspects 
Chromebooks are great for like a company deployment of things. If you live on the Google Drive, need that, use that anyways, it's perfect. Um, and the more I'm looking at, um, uh, you know, we have, we now have a Office 365 subscription in the household for Missy. Um, and, you know, she's... Uh, are you on the, per I think we talked about she's this. She's on, so the, personal on the personal one. plan. Um, you know, it's nice she can get to her stuff, but on the I know she was uh, working on the press release for this week, and she can go and bring it up at work, and uh, on the website because uh, mm -hmm. all her documents. Because you get unlimited web app access. Exactly, right? uh, but you can't do certain things like she couldn't get into the header to change, to fix the logo or something like that. Um, so I mean, it is kind of, but still, you know, even Google Google Docs Drive doesn't do everything mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. like say word does but it does enough if that's all you need yeah so, um there was a side note on this i actually saw over the weekend you mentioned you mentioned adobe and then i'm kind of poking around a little bit at the creative cloud since i'm paying for it i need to use more of this thing um autodesk has something similar autodesk has something similar as far with as... like a cloud app thing okay my, my mom my mom does a, a autocad Mm -hmm. and uh, they're actually getting into some other kind of 3D aspects of that, and they're, they're working that out. Uh, but she's showing me on her phone. She pulled up, and she got a new 5S, um, and, but she can pull up drawings. Yeah, they can do, you can do drawings on the... I don't, think, I don't know if you can necessarily really edit them. No, no. It, 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 like I, I asked her, like, so this is basically you're out on a job site. Uh, you know, the one guy can go out there and pull up the drawing right there, Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think better would be even if you had an iPad or something. Well, I think the iPad has a little more capability. Than I think the so phone. too. I think so too. So, so they're part of that suite now on their side, which I presume, uh, and I'm wondering if that's going to be in some, like a Creative Cloud, as in you pay for the service, not the software, mm -hmm. you know, kind of thing. So, F Photoshop came out with a nice update today for iOS. Really? Yeah. You know, and this is again and that's free. Have have had the Creative Cloud or, since since the last time I was teaching. Uh, what last summer and i have not dived into i forgot i was like oh there's all this adobe stuff on that i can access on the phone you know isn't there like extra apps that you can do like a touchpad interface to what you're working on on the, <clears throat> on the photoshop yeah they could like it has a like there's kind of a control center where you can quickly change what tools you're using yes so you have the mouse in this hand your tool, tool change in this hand you can work with like a kind of like a paint palette and kind of mix paint mm -hmm. colors and get new mm -hmm. colors out of it. Those were the two that I, I the main ones I saw. Um, jump into those. The does it have a price on here? The Photoshop for the. You know about Creative uh, Cloud prices? See. No, it's Photoshop Express for the iPad. Mm -hmm. I don't see. Yeah, last I knew that was five bucks. Oh, is and it? then there was like a, a another in app in-app purchases probably a lot of in-app purchases probably like you get filters or something um but you see on the ipad probably is the more more interesting one all right so uh we got a few other things here what's this g plus update going on so google plus updated and they put in a new thing like a stories and videos mode i saw somebody like, share like check out so and so's story but i wasn't sure mm -hmm. what that was about and then, the, like, it's the, the stories and um, movies mode. And then it also had something to do. They added some stuff for Auto Awesome where it kind of used to prompt you to turn on Auto Awesome where it would select the photo for Auto Awesome. Now you have control. And I'm not, don't quote me as the Google Plus. I know. Plus you only go into genius. Google Plus when I tag you with yes. stuff. <laughs> um, but it's something about you can manually turn on and off Auto Awesome without it. Nice. Asking. Yeah, because usually I'll just like, you know, I have everything going ahead and upload to Google right now from my phone. And mm -hmm. sometimes when I've taken multiple pictures or something, I'll do, I'll do an auto awesome. If you see me share an auto awesome, because I'm like, oh, look what happened here. That's kind of cool how that turned out. Um, I did nothing. Did <laughs> nothing. Um, and I like what they've been doing lately. Like there's something you can get into in there where um, you can make movies uh, with your pictures. And I know they do, they've done a few sample things, like at the end of the year or, or some other anniversaries, they've done stuff like that. Um, but, I don't know. So, cool that they're uh, keep updating that. It, it, uh, it, it's so powerful, their photo side. Mm -hmm. If nothing else, um, I mean, the, the fact that you can go in there and say, um, search for uh, uh, pic all the pictures that you have of a dog. 
and you'll pull up all the dogs. And not nothing that you've tagged. Like this is like the the image, you know, recognition software that they have going on on their end. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. So um, let's see. We got a few more things here. YouTube to acquire Twitch for one billion dollars. <laughs> do you, Do you think it'll occur? I I I yeah. I don't I don't doubt it. They got the money, um, and that's. I mean, they already have a presence with a lot of Let's Play videos, but Twitch is still the go-to place for that. And Twitch has all the connections with the new generation of consoles. Um, it's kind of become the cool brand to go with it. Although, again, I think a ton of these videos are being used on YouTube because uh, YouTube um, is so, you know... You know, this is the other thing, though. Does this mean they're also buying Justin TV? Because isn't Twitch TV just an offshoot of Justin TV? If it's an offshoot, it might be like they might have made a subsidiary or something like that, that just be. to protect, mm -hmm. protect Justin. If they TV. do that, Justin TV doesn't have anything. I'm well, sorry. And, and, well, I wonder as over time, will they leave Twitch alone like Facebook did Instagram or will they pull this mm. into the fold? I think it pulled in. And based on what we've seen between Microsoft and Google, are they going to pull it from the one? Like, or what are they going to do? No, no, there's, no. There's, gonna there's already a YouTube app on there. There's already other Google stuff, I think, on there. Um, no, I don't think it's going to make any difference either way. Google is going to buy WordLens. If uh, you haven't, don't remember that, we talked about it on the show actually a bit. I put a video together um, that was, uh, I remember I had a WordLens on my glass and I'm going around the mexican owned grocery store up here and look at all the mexican uh uh condiments uh and, and translating it live um uh, it is a really cool app and, and it's it's on your iphone it's on probably google play store as well um and and will live change text in the picture in front of you uh, while they're doing this you know they're just going to take this tech and 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 Put it into Google Translate. Mm -hmm. It's just going to make Google Translate really cool. In the meantime, if you don't want to know what the hell all this is about, because you can download the app for free on your iPhone. It's free for the glass, of course, for now. Uh, and then you would have to buy the language pack for like five bucks a pop. They're all free. You can go ahead and do it. The cool, the cool thing I think about that I really I liked about this product was that it tries to match the font. Yes. Yeah. So yes. not not only does it. Do you like the OCR, the 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 words, and figure out what word and convert the language, etc. It matches the font, which which I think just it it just pushes it over the edge to make it that 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 cool app. They they did it right. Mm -hmm. It works well. Yeah, yeah. It is, this is one of those kind of like changing apps. Like I'm no longer afraid to go to a foreign country. Not that. I was really, really afraid, but you know, still the language bar <laughs> barrier is is kind of intimidating. But now I can look at a menu, and you know, or a sign, and boom, there it is. You know, it's that easy. Not like you mispronouncing a word or say, uh, you know, that on top of the the aspect where your phone can already do uh, what is Spanish for "help me find my hotel," and and it'll say it. You know, mm -hmm. and then they hear that. It, you know, it, it's. It, it's 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 lowering that barrier and it's it's pretty cool do you find yourself still using your google glass as often as you used to nope 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 why not um it would again just i need to i need to buy the glasses the overly expensive glasses for it so i'll wear it more but i am back to wearing it when i'm like at home and working mm -hmm. and um it, again that um, um i'm working but still want to stay connected with everything going on you know anything vital will go to it plus tweets mm -hmm. um so it keeps me updated if i'm involved in something else because i'm one of those people that puts my head down on the project and editing and something and you don't see me for eight hours you know and, and meanwhile somebody's like hey did you see what happened on twitter and the important people that tweet things are coming to my glass and at least i kind of got a little bit of heads up and I'll, I'll let me at least take a little bit of my mind off a project because you need to break those those times up mm -hmm. um but I, like I don't know. I, do, I don't want to take like I don't want to wear it to like a Alpha Lab event and be that guy, you know. Mm -hmm. like, like 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 I feel like it's no longer the G Wiz or the you know. You're just that guy with glass. Well, see, I I just viewed it as like I've thought so many times about buying it. Mm -hmm. Don't buy it now. And I just look at it as because because I think of the bazillion uses I would have for it. Okay, wait, wait. I take it back. No, you have a kid. 
buy it now. Well, I have, <laughs> now I have is the time where you want to have the, it. The kid trying to do like home improvement stuff and, and recording it as kind of like how to stuff. Mm hmm. The the numerous times I could use it during the day at work to take pictures of whiteboards where I wouldn't have to even redraw mm -hmm. whatever is going on on the whiteboard. Oh, there's, work. I love it. Yeah, I, I, I there's just so many things that I think I would use it for. Mm -hmm. But that that price point's just a little too hot. I do like mm -hmm. um, and we what was this discussion? There's the discussion about um um they're pushing uh there's more travel get glassware for instance mm -hmm. i think four square is being added to it there's trip it uh, open table's been added to it that's where i got that name from this week um and there's a lot of jeez uh, we talked about i had a good conversation um there is actually they, they did a um um you can apply as a nonprofit, if you have an idea, and they'll, and they'll actually give you like twenty five thousand dollars and stuff. So I had a good discussion with somebody in the nonprofit sector about like what could we do with this thing. Mm -hmm. um, one idea came out. So with all this travel stuff, now it's like okay, um, damn tourists with their cameras and <laughs> looking up at the skyscrapers right in front of me while I'm trying to get somewhere downtown. Now it's now you get to identify all the tourists with their cameras and their Google Glass on their face because now they have all <laughs> this going on. You know, you're just gonna see like 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 groups, your your groups of tourists like walking through, uh, just all looking around even more and stopping in more ridiculous places because they're like field trip just told me there used to be a bridge here. You know, um, but. Oh, it's, it's interesting. I think it's great. And I think it's something where if, you know, I could see even um, a, a travel company, you know, with a walking tour of downtown Pittsburgh, hands out Google Glass as you guys walk around. When you get on your Segway. And when you get on your Segway. <laughs> oh, it's a perfect companion to your Segway. Exactly. So you take your Segway with your Google Glass mm -hmm. over to the Just Ducky tour. It's yeah. just I, I, I'm just I'm just kind of beyond this idea of it being a practical everyday thing because the watches, the watches mm -hmm. are going to be I, I think I just can't see it. The glass is going to be the Segway glass is going to be the thing that works in specific instances like you have it to do this thing. You know, maybe a journalist. Like, I feel like if you're a newspaper journalist, you'll have it, you know, mm -hmm. to 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 walk around and be able to get stuff. You know, uh, uh, well, there's a picture that there was a picture of a, of a guy at the, the Microsoft announcement, which was a very closed invite thing today. And it was funny because they showed one person in the audience wearing Google Glass mm -hmm. and they showed the whole front row. Now, mind you, you're at the surface event. Mm -hmm. The whole front row is MacBooks. <laughs> <laughs> Every writer in that place, and, and I'm guessing it's because they're all actually on the MacBook, probably 11 inch because they're traveling. Mm -hmm. Probably a lot of people that travel. Mm -hmm. I've actually thought about downsizing to the 11 inch from the 13 inch. Oh, my God. I, I can't. You know, I, I, I hopped on this like 14 inch, you know, computer um, and I could not. I'm so glad I went and got a Mac 15. Like, well, but keep in mind that nine times out of ten when I'm doing anything like Photoshop, true. That's true. I have a 30 inch cinema display. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I mean, it is a good kind of core thing. You can plug into a large monitor and uh, you're, you're good to go. Um, I guess I don't travel that much, so I'm not yeah. worried about well, it. I look at it as I'm taking this back and forth to work every day, mm. along with at, at, at a minimum one other tablet, if not this, my corporate laptop, potentially a Surface and an Android tablet and an iPad. Now I know Katie's over so there. So weight she, becomes I, an issue. I know Katie's over there. She, I think she operates exclusively on her Note. Yes. Well, I have I have my Note and then my uh, my MacBook with the Hello Kitty duct tape, which is actually <laughs> propping my iPhone up. Oh, I'm glad you're getting use out of that. <laughs> <laughs> Until we get a letter, little bit better corporate integration, mm -hmm. I, I can't use my iPad for as much as I would like to do at work. Yeah. yeah. Um, once that kind of kicks in or any any tablet for that matter, whether it be Android, iOS, my, even the Windows 8, like, like we're not there yet. So on so the enterprise side. Here's it. So here's the the part of the show where I say, so this is the weird thing I've been doing lately. Um, <laughs> and I don't know if it's just because all I have are like, you know, iPad ones in a seven inch uh, next thingy here somewhere that I still keep losing in the middle of a desk. Um, so this this Windows computer has kind of become my tablet replacement. 
As in, let's leave the bulky MacBook upstairs to go render things. And uh, if I'm just going to be sitting in front of the TV and doing like so social media ing writing something, this is the thing I'm going to have in front of me. Is this Windows little bit smaller, lighter? Uh, What's your battery life like? Not bad. Not bad at all. Are we talking eight hours? Not know, bad. Not eight hours, but I mean, it's long <laughs> enough. And maybe like, you know, by the time I hit the end of Arrow, uh, I was like, ah, I need to plug this thing in. Maybe, you know, it's a few hours. Yeah. You know, that's where I, I need that. I don't I don't get to a plug enough during the day. Yeah. Like I need something that gets that MacBook Air is perfect for you. Like the right. MacBook Air or or even like the new the, anything with a Haswell chipset mm -hmm. that's newer. That's getting your usually your six to eight. Air. And, and I was actually thinking about. To make more use out of the Surface Pro that I have getting, they have the, the keyboard cover with the battery, but then it adds two pounds. So it's like, okay, <laughs> no. And you're only getting so much out of that because it is like the Surface. The Surface. No, I have the Pro. Oh, you have a Pro too. I, I, I keep forgetting. I have the Surface well. and then I, because my Surface is the original, so I can't use the, key, the power cover with that. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm still like, it's all for me. It's all about weight. Because I find myself, I'm I'm going back and forth across town a lot more, and I'm needing to take stuff my my bag with me. Mm -hmm. So weight weight and sure. and my back is becoming. I feel an issue. like nothing is in my computer bag with this new Mac Pro. <laughs> <laughs> it's like nice. I went to a client's on Friday, and they they have they have the old. Uh, it's uh, probably like one of the last revisions of. Uh, probably like a 2011 MacBook Pro, 15 mm -hmm. inch as well. And I'm like, see how light this is compared to yours. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is what I was carrying around too. You know, I left my power adapter here last time. That's how similar they were. You know, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, yeah, it, it, it's been pretty nice. So, awesome. Uh, well, on that note, oh hey, at least we're not like Game of Thrones author George R. R. Martin, who uh, writes on a DOS machine using WordStar. That's what I started off on. Hey, well, he never stopped. <laughs> is the problem? You know, it makes. I guess it makes sense a little bit. He's comfortable with it, and mm -hmm. uh, and I understand people being set in their ways a good a good bit. Um, but uh, but he says he has like another newer computer that he does like his web surfing and stuff on. That makes sense. You're not mm -hmm. like cross pawning and getting a virus on the computer from other goofy stuff you do on the internet. I'm getting whatever inspiration for the show that I uh, belovedly call Murder Tits um, uh, on his internet machine. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's. Uh, he was actually on Conan this week talking about it. And did you listen to the Twit thing about this? They were talking about it on Twit. They were yes. So and, and it's interesting because I. So if I'm if I need to take down a bunch of text. Whether it's notes or something I'm going to end up using on an internal blog at work or whatever, like I use the most bare bones text editor. I don't. I don't even launch pages on my on my iPad. Like I launch the note tool mm -hmm. and just start typing. That's my. You know, usually <laughs> if I'm uh, not able to get into WordPress and want to type a blog, notes. I'll live in Apple Notes. Yeah, you, you get you get spell and, check. And guess what? And if I'm good. on a PC, I got the iCloud. I'm just gonna go into Notes, so it's on all the rest of my devices. I'm good. I am fine. Like I've used Evernote before. Works great. It's it's fine. It's well, I like fine. It. I want something that syncs. Yeah. So if mm -hmm. I'm on if I'm on an Android tablet, I need something that's gonna go. And that's my thing. I I want to. I need to. I will forget what machine I have. I have too many rolling around here, so it needs to be on everything mm -hmm. or accessible by everything in some mean fashion. However, so I'd say it, it's pretty cool uh, uh, how how we're at that that point. I mean, holy crap! Hey, look, I got a new PC over here, guys, <laughs> <laughs> and and I'm just like logging in, getting my Chrome, brings everything down. Ah, uh, do I want Google Drive so I can get stuff? All oh, right, the drivers for the thing is in Google Drive. We'll sync in, just sync these folders here. Boom, boom, boom. Everything's on there. Did you get so, another new computer? Yeah, it's hiding over here. It's really tiny. Uh, I'll show you to it after the show. Um, again, it's a ah, we don't think it works. I think the hard drive wins. It's the fan. It's really loud, and I, <laughs> you know what it needed. You need to blow all the damn dust out of there, and it's fine to go. But no, it's older. It's like a, it's an Athlon 64 designed for Windows XP, but I think I might be able to get something running on it. Cool. So, I mean, it has Windows XP running like a dream, so why not? So, um, but anyways, I think that's the one I was tweeting about the other night. 
Oh, I'm going to be doing that too. It's like, look what I found. What can I do with this thing? <laughs> it's going to be my new thing on Twitter. So, anyways, uh, with that uh, calendar, of course, WWEC is coming up. E3 is coming up. It's the geek cavalcade of announcements, including random surface announcements, apparently. And I may have information next week. You may have something I don't very know. special. I don't. I don't know if I will be allowed to talk. Wait, about wait, wait, wait. So you're either going to have a lot of information to disclose on our really awesome uh, 200th episode, or it's going to be a lot of us messing with you because you know stuff you don't tell us about. Talk about. Blink twice. <laughs> Blink twice if there's a new hmm 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 in the next hmm 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 because I don't even know if I can say what the heck yeah, you're supposed to talk yeah, about. We'll, we'll find out. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll am find I even supposed to know Tuesday. about this? Am I? Well, it, it was. I mean, it was in an email. Okay. <laughs> Wait, did it have one of those things at the bottom that says you cannot nope. retransmit or share? Okay. Nope. <laughs> oh, then it's, it's was fair no game. Was fair no game. With Why that not? company, we do have an NDA. <laughs> but with the other company, we don't have an NDA. So company A reached out to company B to talk to me who works at company C. So is the company... Oh, I don't even know my And letters. company A lost. said that they wanted to talk to us about stuff that was upcoming that wasn't announced yet but we don't very, have it we don't have an i'd be shocked i'd be shocked if you don't show up in that room and it's like <laughs> all right you gotta walk out unless you sign this thing sign it yeah or well, you, i don't know do they verbally make you nda well, the, the, they said that one of the reasons that it that it's at, at the time and date it is is because it's close enough to, I, it sounds like it's close enough mm-hmm. to them that you know and i really i really think some companies are a lot <laughs> looser than they used to be mm-hmm. about things of that nature <laughs> you're gonna have to tune in next week to t- find out <laughs> if we can tell you or not tell you what the heck we're talking about the kicker so. is, is then like within the next couple weeks i'll be like yeah i knew all that <laughs> <laughs> yes um that 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 well you know technically if you get like if you get the developer ios update you're not supposed to talk about it yeah, in fact, if you if you sign up for the public beta now, because the public OS, the OS is now public beta, yeah, you have to sign a disclaimer agreement. Yeah, that now, now the trick to that is so the trick to that is if someone else gives out the information, the you, history, can yeah, kinda, yeah, you can then you can kind of talk about it. Yeah, but you can't say oh because I'm part of the beta I saw this. Like mm-hmm. you could say oh I I I agree with what they said over at whatever it's so it's so weird it's so weird um all right guys uh chilla is at chilla on the twitters that's me i'll be there at k dutters on the twitters hi <laughs> wait wait i'm a friend oh <laughs> Aww. this is my buddy Camille. she's been sitting on my lap the whole time she's tiny <laughs> awesome. it's the most yinzer named cat ever her name is Kamir, k-a-m-i-r which is because the only thing she answers to is come here <laughs> what the hell? Um, sorry, the chat room is going nuts. Um, and uh, of course, I'm at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Check out stuff at sorgatronmedia.com, mikesorg.com, um, and check out insertcointobegin.com because I just did a real quick loot crate unboxing video earlier today. Uh, if you're into that kind of thing, um, and let me know what you think of your loot crates this month, guys. No spoilers, no spoilers. You have to go watch the video. I didn't even put like a picture of the stuff on the page. That would have been mean, and Bobby would have been <laughs> mad. Mad Bobby. I hear about it on Bass Battle. That's here right after this, every Tuesday, live.sorgatronmedia.com. We get started with this show at 6 30 p.m. Eastern Time. We actually start at 4 p.m. with a great little show called Journal of Lifestyle Medicine, where we talk with doctors. We talk with people way smarter than I am and with a lot more schooling um, and have written books <laughs> with authors and stuff. Now, I don't talk to them, they don't let me talk to them. Um, um, but we have some professional journal journalists. Uh, actually, we have an award, an Emmy-winning journalist on the show the last couple of weeks, uh, helping, um, and uh, and and that really blows the quality out of the water for the rest of the stuff we do here tonight. Um, but go check that out and everything else at SorgatronMedia.com. Um, hit us up on Twitter at AwesomeCast, uh, AwesomeCast on the Facebook and the Google Pluses. Which uh, you know you can also tag uh, John Chichilla on, so he'll go there every once so, in yeah. a while. If you tag me, I will come. 
If you tag them, they will come. I don't know. You know, I do. I've been trying to be better with a we talked with blah, blah, blah. And, and you know, how many of those are probably the what Google Plus is a thing is still wait, <laughs> I'm on it. What are you? What? Um, you can also check us out. iTunes, Roku, Blip TV, YouTube, Spreaker, audio and video formats as well. Uh, and hey, big thanks to Michael Allen um, at Mike Allen PR on the Twitters, who's been helping us with show notes and tweets all night. To let people know. Hopefully, get some more people in the doors. I, yeah, I've been getting a lot of uh, uh, spikes definitely throughout the night on Tuesdays. There's definitely a lot of people that come through, check the show out. Even if they're not dropping in the chat room and, and, and jumping in there. I think I've seen some different faces lately. It's been pretty cool. Uh, so with that, uh, thank you to our awesome chat room. Uh, thank you our awesome guests. Thank you. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. We're getting awesome. We're getting awesome.